Hello there, my friends. How are you doing today? I hope you're doing so well. I was thinking about a video idea that you guys have been asking for, I've been thinking about, and it is my favorite Swedish or Scandinavian brands. I haven't filmed it, but I thought today is the perfect day because I read this British Vogue article and also another article from Nordic, what was it called? Nordicperspective.com. I thought, let's look through the articles. Let's see what they think are the best Swedish or Scandi brands and also I brought some of my favorites you see some here I have some hidden right here which I will show you from my own wardrobe which are all Swedish brands and I'm so excited to get into it so let's get started I'm gonna attempt doing a little screen recording as well so let's see how that goes but hopefully you guys can see my screen 10 Scandi brands that have gained cult status let's see if we agree with this First one being Samso. This is a brand which I see everywhere. Honestly, I have bought some stuff from them previously, but most of it is made from polyester unless you really look out for those like wool or cotton pieces. And for me, if something is cut from polyester, then you know I'm not a big fan. So Samso, I get that it's like a cult kind of status kind of brand, but equally from me it's a no thank you. The next brand on British Vogue's Scandi brand list is Ghani. This is for me similar to Samso. It's one of those brands that all of the cool girls wear. I mean, Samso is not as much of a cool girl brand, but it's one of those brands that a lot of Scandi people wear, similarly to Ghani. Ghani to me is, I mean, like I said, it's a cool girl brand. Most of it to me feels very trendy, very like not timeless and chic. It feels more kind of trendy and fashion forward, which is not really my preferred way of dressing. Like a few years ago, I thought a lot of the dresses were so cute, and when I went to look at them, they were kind of all from polyester or rayon or like best case scenario, viscose. And I mean, as we all know, I'm not a huge fan. To me, this is not cult status. So Ghani gets a pass from yours truly. Why we're doing this also is because I'm Swedish, if you didn't already know. <laughs> So that's why I feel like I have some sort of, you know, say in these Scandi brands because I am Scandi myself. The next brand is Cecile Bansen. Bansen? No idea. have never heard of it. So from a Scandi, this is not a cult favorite. <laughs> also, it looks very fluffy and I'm not really a fluffy kind of person, you know? So it's a no from me. Totem. We love Totem. We have a Totem sweater right here. Totem is one of those. It's a Swedish brand. It was started in 2014, so it's a little bit of a younger brand, but it to me it definitely has that kind of Scandi brand kind of vibe, you know? Kind of chic, kind of minimal aesthetic, kind of streamlined cuts all of the things we love on this channel. So I mean the Totem stuff we love. I am quite new to Totem, but as we all know, I bought my Totem striped sweater earlier on this year as a little bit of a birthday gift to myself. I bought it in a large. I've talked about it at length on my channel before, but feels so weighty, so luxurious, such a like nice timeless classic piece, and I love a stripe, as we can see from my couch. <laughs> You know, but a striped sweater I feel is a timeless classic piece that you would never go wrong with, or at least I would never go wrong with. And I am so enjoying having this in my wardrobe. I've seen recently some Instagram or like YouTube girlies wearing totem slacks, which kind of made me think a little bit because I want new slacks. I want high-waisted slacks with the like pleat in the front of the leg. I think those are so chic and especially if they're like a straight or a little bit of a flared leg. They're long. They do this bunchy thingy over the sneakers like every Instagram girly is wearing at the moment. I think that's such a good look. And I've heard that Totem makes some of those. So I'm intrigued. I might do a little U YouTube, a little Google search to see if I can find any that I think are reasonably priced and in like a nice fabric and stuff like that. So I'm intrigued. I will have a look, but Totem, like their coats I like, but I'm not super sold on like handbags because to me, 
Totem is not a handbag brand, let's be honest. So I will not be buying Totem handbags. You know I love my French and Italian and English handbag brands, but maybe not Swedish handbags. I think that's where we draw the line, actually. Next on the list, Rotate Berger Christensen. I'm assuming this is Danish. I have never heard of this brand and it looks very maximalist in my opinion and I probably never heard of it because it's not my aesthetic so apologies, sincere apologies, but let's just run past this one. Okay, so the next brand by Marlene Birger, also not one of my faves. I've seen a lot of their stuff and I've seen a lot of their stuff being cut from polyester once again and the cuts, fabrics, kind of aesthetic they have doesn't kind of speak to me personally so I skip this brand we scroll never heard of this brand would not even know how to pronounce it but it looks kind of chic might have to look into this one but it's Holzweiler no idea have you heard of it I've never heard of it but those slacks look kind of cute actually so that might be a vibe Acne Studios every Swedish cool girl's favorite they, to me, are known for their jeans. Like, when I was 13, I would have killed for a pair of Acne Studios jeans, but mm, it's a little bit too cool for me. I am too timeless and boring for Acne Studios. This little, what do we call it? The Musubi or whatever shoulder bag. I see this on every other <laughs> Swedish girl when I'm in the city center and I'm a little bit over it without even owning it. Once again, to me, Acne Studios is not a handbag brand, so I wouldn't buy a handbag from them regardless, but I think Acne Studios, I mean, what they're known for now, I mean, sure, they're known for their denim in my world, but I think for most people, I mean, the oversized huge scarf, the little smiley face hat, the oversized sweaters, the like shoes with like the ones that we see here on the screen, like that kind of stuff. I don't think it's my aesthetic, you know, it's a little bit too cool, girl. I prefer to lean on the like timeless classic front. Acne Studios is not that, so I will stay far away. Thank you very much. No way, I actually have one pair of Acne Studios shoes. They're the Acne Studios, I think they're called the Pistol Boots. Everyone and their mom owned those boots a while ago, like 10 years ago or so. I still have mine. I never wear them because the little string on them, like when you walk, they swing back and forth and make this like noise. So I mean, the boots themselves, they're chic, they're cool, they're cute. But that noise drives me absolutely insane. <laughs> so I don't wear them. Maybe I should sell them actually, but I haven't. Byte Studios, is this Danish? This looks very Danish to me. I mean, those jeans look kind of cute, but I've never heard of this brand actually. Hmm. Interesting. It's probably also Danish. Yeah, this is a Danish designer that looks very... Danish too. I think Danish versus Swedish fashion. I mean, this is just my humble opinion as a Swede. I feel like Danish fashion is a little bit more fashion forward. Swedish fashion is a little bit more kind of muted, toned down. Every Swede loves wearing gray and black. Danish people like more color and pattern in my experience. So that's why I think like the Ghanis of the world, the Stine Goya, also looks a little bit Ghani inspired to me. It's not my cup of tea. Let's keep scrolling. That was it from British Vogue, actually. Uh, okay, I'm not super impressed. It's only one brand on this list that I actually would recommend and that I actually would wear. So that's interesting. Let's jump on over to the NordicPerspective.com article. I found this section. There were several sections, like a sporty section, a affordable section, which was all of like H&M and stuff, and... I don't want to talk about H&M on this channel, so I am skipping right to the best Swedish clothing brands, high-end fashion. At the top of the page, we see Acne Studios. We already know how I feel about Acne Studios, so let's just run past this little thingy. Next thing is Philippa K. 
Philippa K is one of these brands that I adore. You do have to look at the composition label because quite a bit of it is cut from polyester or viscose, which clearly, as we know, is not my favorite. But you do have those really nice material, kind of really nice cut pieces that are just a 10 out of 10. Philippa K was started in 1993 in Stockholm by a lady called Philippa Knutsson, hence the name Philippa K. I have quite a few pieces. I thought I would bring out my two favorites. First off, one of my absolute favorite wardrobe staples is from Philippa K, as we know. Little turtleneck, which you can have under blazers. It's short sleeve. It's like a cashmere blend kind of material, and it's so soft, so lightweight. I wear this all throughout summer. I don't really wear it throughout winter because my arms get super cold, but I mean, essentially, this little shirt is just everything. Brilliant. Then my favorite piece, or like one of my favorite like tailoring pieces in my wardrobe is this Philippa K, obviously, blazer. It's just a navy blue blazer in this like gorgeous sharp shoulder cut in a breathable nice material. We love this. I am obsessed. Continuing to scroll. Odd Molly, oh my gosh. This brand had a chokehold on Sweden back in like 2014, I wanna say. Everyone had the little Odd Molly wraparound sweater. I'm not sure if we're gonna see it. No, we're not gonna see it here. The Swedish girly starter pack was this Odd Molly sweater, like the wraparound with the like maximalist print or pattern, I guess we should say. A blue pair of jeans and then like a brown boot. Oh my gosh, everyone was wearing it. I was not allowed to wear it because my mom thought it was so ugly. Those were dark times. We scroll past. Cod Invested is one of those brands which is expensive. I wouldn't recommend it at all. Everything is polyester. It's horrible. I don't know why this is here. We don't like. Asket, I've never heard of. Wants to slow down consumption, making meaningful, essential, and long-lasting clothes. That sounds like right up my alley. I've never heard of this brand. I'll have to look into it after this video. Scrolling right through Totem. We love Totem. We already know. A Day's March. No, it's not my vibe. House of Dagmar. Not my vibe. The materials are just not what I want them to be. The Dagmar style is, to me, leans more Danish, not Swedish, so more maximalist and more like pattern stuff. Clearly not my vibe. Hope is one of those, like if you like oversized kind of acne studio vibe of clothing, you would like Hope. To me, it's not a favorite, clearly, because I'm not cool enough. So it feels very trendy and very like cool girl-ish. Schutterheim is one of those raincoat brands that you will see everyone wearing. They're kind of cute, but equally they're kind of overhyped in my opinion. I don't understand why everyone needs to have one. Jumperfabriken, I love this brand. I did not bring anything from them. Let me... Actually, do I have anything from them out? Nope. They've gone to my winter capsule vibe, so it's not in my wardrobe at the moment, but Jumperfabriken makes gorgeous, like, sweater dresses. I'm sure, I am sure you have seen some on my channel before. We love Jumperfabriken. It's one of those brands that, like I said, gorgeous sweater dresses, like, chic, timeless, classic pieces in great quality materials. Timeless, classic, we love. Rodebier is one of those, I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, brands that once again I see everywhere. I don't get the hype. I have a sweater from them, but I'm not impressed. Like to me, the price versus quality ratio is not what I want it to be. I'm sorry. And I'm basing this off, off of one sweater, so I might be judging the brand too quickly, but equally... My love for Totem, I'm basing on one sweater as well, so I am quick to judge. I am sorry, not sorry. So let's continue. Arquette to me is not high-end, that to me is fast fashion. 
We're not a fan of fast fashion on this channel. This 80s? No idea. Looks very trendy, not my vibe, keep scrolling. Our legacy, once again, trendy, not my vibe, keep scrolling. Tiger of Sweden. We love Tiger of Sweden. I have a few things from them. The one thing that is like a 10 out of 10 in my wardrobe is a Tiger of Sweden little black skirt. I wish I was a skirt person. I'm just not. But this black skirt has made me a skirt person. This is like the one black skirt I actually wear. Or the one skirt, not just black skirt, the one skirt I actually wear in my wardrobe. It's a Tiger of Sweden one. It's, I guess, on the shorter side. But to me, this is still like a good length. Tiger of Sweden, great brand great quality. It's a brand that's been around forever. It was founded in, I think, 1903. So literally eons ago. Forever ago. And if you want to find chic tailoring and you want it to be a Swedish brand, look to Tiger of Sweden, regardless of if you um, want female or male clothing female or male clothing, like whatever side of the spectrum of clothing we're looking for. Tiger of Sweden has it. I love this brand. Why red? It's not my vibe. Let's just keep scrolling. To me, it's too trendy, too like extroverted and not like a minimal aesthetic at all. So, you know, not my vibe. This is like an outdoor brand. I'm not sure why I'm looking at it. My last Stockholm also very like feminine very floral very like i think if you like a kind of feminine floral kind of like zimmerman vibes brand you might like this brand clearly it's not my vibe so i don't own anything from them i have seen one cute silk shirt from them actually i didn't buy it because i thought it was kind of expensive for just a silk shirt so i don't know maybe i'm <laughs> Too poor to understand. Cost to me is also fast fashion, so it's not my vibe. Oscar Jacobson, if you are a guy and you want like classic tailoring and you want it to be a Swedish brand, check out this brand. I don't think they do female clothing, so I can't really speak for them, but I know for like guy clothing, they do great. Same with Yilin Bay, also like men's clothing, so not something I would buy. Ida Sjöstedt. It's also one of those brands, like, if you like Zimmerman, you might like Ida Sjöstedt. She does, like, wedding dresses a lot, I know, for, like, famous people in Sweden. Also, normal people, I would assume, but I've seen a lot of probably hashtag sponsored posts of Ida Sjöstedt dresses on famous people on their wedding days. They also do very, like, floral, ethereal, feminine kind of dresses, so if you like Zimmerman, like, I said, maybe check out Ida Sjöstedt. It's clearly not really my vibe, but I can appreciate it for others. Eton, Eton, however you pronounce it. Also a men's clothing brand that makes great shirts. My dad wears a lot of their shirts. You don't have to steam them or like, what's it called? Iron them. Like when you take them out of the wash and you hang them to dry, they're wrinkle-free, literally. So, they live rent-free in my dad's closet. He wears them a lot. So if you're a guy, you're looking for a good shirt that you don't have to iron, look for Eton. CDLP, no idea. That does not look like my vibe. Case is... That's a grandma brand. And that comes from me who likes grandma fashion, you know? Diana Orving, never heard of it. Stenströms also more of a guy brand. I have a linen shirt from them. It's great. I have worn this so much. I think it's high quality. I get the hype. Like, if you are a guy, go to Stenströms. They have great quality stuff. For me, it's more kind of like, if I want an oversized linen shirt, I might go there. Otherwise, I won't. Or at least, maybe they do have female clothing. Now that I see it here, but I've never really thought about it. This, I don't know what it is. This, I don't know what it is. Who made this list? Like, I am in 
the Scandi fashion world and I don't know these brands. So clearly someone have to like have dug deep on the internet to find these brands. Okay, so what clothing brands are the most popular in Sweden? So based on secondhand shopping, what people search and bid for. One Fjällraven, clearly everyone knows the Fjällraven Konken backpack. I tried to find mine for this video, I had two, but I think I might have left them at my parents' house. So they're not here for me to show you, but everyone knows what a Konkin backpack looks like. Every Swedish person and their mom owns a Konkin backpack. It's one of those, like, the brand started in the 1960s. It started with producing backpacks. Clearly, they've gone from strength to strength when it comes to backpacks. Everyone loves it here in Sweden. Everyone owns one. If you want to look Swedish or Scandinavian, get yourself a Konkin backpack and you will blend right in. Literally. It's not something that I would wear on a daily basis though because I think they're very like utilitarian. Clearly I don't wear them on a daily basis because I left them at my parents' place and I haven't missed them at all. But it's one of those things that I wore during university if I didn't want to wear like a mulberry tote, a Louis Vuitton tote, something like that. If you want to be more low-key and blend in with the crowd, you wear a Konkin backpack. Acne, peak performance. I mean acne, we already know. Peak performance is one of those sports brands. I have one button-up shirt from Peak Performance that I never wear. I know if you're looking for ski gear and stuff, Peak Performance is also a brand that people go to, but I mean to me it's more of a sports brand, so I don't really want to talk about it here. Odd Molly, we already know, have a chokehold on the 2014 Swedish girlies. Clothing brands that Swedes actually wear. That's interesting. Fjallraven, like I said, if you want to blend in with the Swedes, get yourself this backpack. H&M, Lindex, Dressman, Kappal, Everest. What are the Swedish people doing? All of these are fast fashion brands. Can't we do better as a society? Honestly, I don't want to talk about this anymore. This list is boring to me because we don't like fast fashion on this channel. Okay, that was a journey. So there were some brands that I think were lacking from this list coming from a Swedish girly. One that I understand why it's not really on the list because it's a brand that was founded in New York, I think in the early 1900s. So I understand that it's not particularly Swedish, but it was bought by some Swedish entrepreneurs in like the 1970s. And after that, it's been owned by a Swedish family until like, I think 2008. And then it was bought by a Swiss family kind of enterprise. But the headquarter is still in Stockholm. So I still think we can consider this a Swedish brand. The brand is one of those also like tailoring companies. I have a few things from them. I mean, for one, this button-up shirt that I wear so much. They have great suiting stuff, similar to Philippa K, similar to Tiger of Sweden. I guess the Swedish fashion has always been, like I said, a little bit more minimal aesthetic, formal vibes, timeless classic stuff, which is also what I like to do. Like I said, they were founded in New York. I think Gant has one of those like, the brand gives me a Ralph Lauren vibe because it gives me this, like, timeless, classic, chic, kind of heritage clothing kind of vibe, you know? And similar, I have, like, a little summer dress. I think this is so cute. This is from Gantt. This is a linen little dress. It's kind of fitted. It's kind of, like, a little bit longer, something that you could wear to a polo game and blend right in with kind of timeless, classic girlies. Also, one brand that was started in Malmö, Sweden, a brand called Davida Cashmere. This is one of my favorite cashmere sweaters. The quality is so great. I've had it for years and years. It just keeps performing. Sure, I need to remove a few like little pilling thingies once in a while, but not as bad as some of my other cashmere shirts. So great quality, not too overpriced actually, and I adore this little. Davida cashmere sweater. This is one of those outdoor kind of brands. This is, I, I'm not gonna linger on this, but this is also a Swedish classic. This is a Holbrook Sweden sweater. I wear this mainly for like 
I don't know, weekend activities, going to the summer house, going on a little boat trip in the evening when it's cold with a pair of Sabago sailing shoes. That's the vibe for this sweater. We love, we adore. Then another little Swedish classic, this Hette Marks coat you've seen on my channel numerous times. Hette Marks was founded in Sweden in 1940. They've had the same kind of aesthetic for a long, long time. They make great winter coats. This is just a winter like wool pea coat and I adore it. I'm not gonna go on and on because you've seen this on my channel so many times, but Hette Marks is also a Swedish brand that I would like to have on these lists. Last one being a kind of new brand to me. I've had this dress for a little while. I've never worn it because I haven't had the kind of opportunity to wear it. But the brand is Alvar Gallery. They make like great silk and kind of linen kind of stuff. This is a gorgeous linen dress that is a little bit like off shoulder. It has this little waistband and it frills out a little bit on the hemline. I think this dress is gorgeous. I don't, I'm not doing it justice now, but I will wear this in a video sometime soon. And I bought a pair of green Manolos. Green Manolos with this dress. OMG, are you kidding me? So chic. Then there's a last brand that people talk about when it comes to Swedish brands, but it was founded in France. It was in France for like 50 years. I'm not sure if we're gonna consider it Swedish, but it's Bushnell. And it's one of those brands that I think they made the like knitwear for the French army, like in the 1900s. It was founded in 1920. It was bought by a Swedish family in 1970. So it's a brand that if you're Swedish, if you like timeless classic fashion, then I'm sure you You've seen this brand so I thought just to do my due diligence I would mention it. I don't own anything from this brand actually. I've always wanted to own something but I've never found like the perfect little sweater or little cardigan or something like this from the brand but who knows maybe my future holds a Bushnell sweater at some point. I think they're so chic. They also have one of those kind of classic sailor vibes which we all know I adore. I think they're chic, they're classic, they're timeless. So I would add that brand as well. Maybe that ended up being five more brands, but that is it. That was the Swedish brand roundup. Like I said, I've been putting off making this video for a long time now because there are a lot of Swedish brands actually and there are a lot of them that I do adore. I own quite a lot of Swedish brand clothing. Of course, they can be hit and miss like all other brands, but I think I've found some good ones. I think they're worth looking into even if you're not Swedish, especially maybe now with the rise of quiet luxury. I feel like the Scandinavian kind of fashion sense gets a little bit more of relevancy if we want to put it like that because in Sweden or in the other Scandinavian countries but especially what I feel in Sweden at least is that that kind of minimal aesthetic focusing on high quality materials that's kind of always been a vibe here, you know? So I feel like quiet luxury and Scandinavian fashion kind of goes hand in hand, in my opinion. Maybe that was made a little bit more clear by the little selection here, but what do you think about these Swedish brands that I talked about? Do you think I forgot some Swedish brands that we should mention and that I should look into? Thank you so much for watching, and until my next video, stay safe, take care, and I will see you soon. Bye! Bye! Thank <laughs> you.